We have a major problem, and if we don't solve it, it's gonna shut down our entire production, which is, yeah, that's a big problem. Come, come see, I'll show you. So, we're producing lots of parts, hundreds of parts. The afternoon shift running now, pretty soon we're starting the, the night shift. We've hired a bunch of people, we're still hiring people. We need this place running 24 seven. We have 32 machines in the building now, and every single day, more of those come online so that more of them are running at the same time. The problem is power. You see this right here? If you zoom in really close, you see it says 600 amps. Then, come with me. These are the original drawings. In particular, this is the electrical layout. You see here, 600 amps. There's the hydro from the street that goes underground to the pad mount transformer at high voltage at 27,000 uh, volts. And then it drops it down to something usable in here. So that pad mount transformer is supposed to be rated for 225 kVA. That's essentially um, 225 kilowatts. It's not. We thought we were good. We thought we had 600 amps, but we don't. The pad mount transformer on the lawn at some point, I don't know when, I don't know why, changed it to a smaller transformer, meaning that we don't have 600 amps coming to our building. And that's a major problem because we're going to be drawing more than 400 amps running all of these machines. If we spin up all of the machines, we're probably going to blow the fuses at the street. It would shut down our whole production. We might get into trouble from the city and the hydro company. Also, how long will it take them to change a fuse? We could have no power in the building for far, far too long. So we don't want that to happen. Let's talk about solutions. Solution number one, this sounds like the reasonable thing to do. Oh, you need a big, bigger transformer? Put in a bigger transformer. That sounds reasonable, right? Well, that is the solution, but that could take a year. It depends, is the transformer in stock? Is it something that they care about or want to do? Permits, things like that. Doable, but it might take longer. We need machines running now and we can't wait a year. So we're going to be parallel pathing some solutions. Solution number one, yeah, get a bigger transformer. Solution number two is get a generator. <laughs> which is unfortunate because generators will come with their own set of problems, but it's a fast solution where I can go and buy a generator off of Marketplace or Kijiji today, and I can hook it up and have it running tomorrow. Now it's gonna cost me probably four times as much for that same uh, amount of electricity, but I can be running today. The third option is solar. And I actually really like this option because we can fit about 200 kilowatts of solar on this roof here. The problem is again, it's slow. So if I pull the trigger now, I won't get solar until, I don't know, a few months from now. And then it's also winter. <laughs> we want to be running this place 24 seven. Obviously you don't have to produce any power in the middle of the night. So we need to have some sort of giant battery pack. This is something that I am working on, but it's more of a long-term solution. It's more for the environment and more for saving money than for running machines 24 seven today. Okay, I've got some updates on the transformer. First off, I've been doing a bunch of research. And so to give you a brief overview, we have the 600 amp breaker inside. That's to protect this. Inside this, there's three fuses. If those go down, then it's not as easy as just flipping a switch back on. It means that my whole building is offline until hydro comes out. I do not want that to happen. But I think that those fuses are oversized, that they're built not to protect this, but to protect the power lines. I believe I'll blow the breaker inside before I blow those fuses, which is really good news. I've also been talking to the hydro company. They've told me do not run more than 400 amps on this transformer. They own the transformer. If I go over its rated amount, I'll start to damage it. I can run over for like brief period of times. But again, we want to be running 24 seven. I don't exactly know how much power I'm going to be drawing on the peaks when all of the machines are running because I don't have all of the machines running yet. So hopefully soon I will know that, but we're kind of like speed running the replacements of this. So this is in works, this is going good, but I don't know the schedule for this. 
and I can't be in a situation where I'm not producing knives, where I have machines idle, not making knives and not shipping to you guys. So I'm gonna buy a generator. I'm gonna have it as a backup. So if there's a situation where I can't get enough power from this or while this goes down, while they're replacing it, I've got a generator to run the machines. There's not going to be a time where I'm not running machines to ship knives to you guys. That is my top priority. But I really also don't wanna be burning diesel. Yeah, let's go get a generator. Mike and I are in the armored truck. We just drove out to Caledonia. There is a generator that we want to pick up. So we're going to check it out and then maybe buy it. I think we should chain it down before it runs away. Oh, this is our new to us generator to power, say, an entire building. Like maybe that building right there. It's not very pretty to look at, but it's got real good bones, eh? Just like me. These tires are scary looking. Lucky for us, these tires only have to roll off of this trailer and then into our courtyard. Okay, we're ready for our first test. We have a temporary setup. Again, this is temporary. This isn't the proper, right, long-term solution, but we have it hooked up from the main breaker out, goes through a six gauge wire, goes directly into the 600 volt panel through a 60 amp breaker. So we're gonna be powering all of our 600 volts off of this in order to load test this. There's a lot of ways for it to go wrong. Like the engine could stall out, the generator itself could have a fault. When the CNC machine spins up, it was drawing 80 amps. And now imagine that times 12, and that's just on one set of machines. Can the generator handle those spikes. If the generator can handle it without stalling or throwing a fault or something, can the CNC machines handle the dip in frequency, the dip in voltage? So this purely the generator now? Yep. Yes. We could take this whole tent, we could put it in the middle of nowhere and make Smith plates. Hey, uh, machines are warmed up. Can you go to the generator and watch it while I do some stuff? Ben, you want to do spin up of two of them at once? So it's the AC line voltage is going to drop. Three, two, one, go. See it sort of back off and then come back. He's got the compressor running now at the same time. Okay. And now with this, I want to see this on camera while we do both at the same time. And does this drop into a bad zone? Three, two, one, go. About 3% lower, 91 is where we hit too. 103 amps at 600. <laughs> I think we're good. I don't know what any of that means. It's a good sign. Everything is working. We're able to spin up three machines at the exact same time. For reference here, when you first spin up the spindle, it takes a lot of current to get that going from zero to 15,000 RPM in less than a second. Um, to be specific, each machine will draw 80 amps, which is double the full, full load current. That's 240 amps instantly. And it's trying to draw that from the generator all at once. And we were able to do that. Now, of course, the, the voltage did sag. The frequency did sag a bit. We don't have footage of what the generator looked like, but we were told that there was a big plume of of smoke and a bit of vibration as the diesel kicked in some extra power. It's a really good sign that when we have 12 machines running in here, that when one of them spins up and another one stops, and it's all gonna be randomly distributed. So it's very unlikely two will spin up at the same time and nearly impossible that three would spin up at the same time, which is great. We now have a good backup solution. So if the pad mount transformer is being replaced or if the power ever goes out, we'll be able to continue to produce knives. And so far the machines have produced over 3000 sets of Smith blade parts. So these have to go upstairs, get assembled and shipped to you guys.